So I've heard this episode is a little bit different. My understanding of it is that there were budget cuts or something like that that forced them to deviate from their original plan. But like always, I'm planning on approaching it with an open mind, open heart. Even the filler episodes in Atlo were great. So I'm sure it'll be enjoyable one way or the other. And after I finish watching it, I'm planning on reading the statement from creator Brian. Kanietsko? Did I get that right? So here we go. Avatar Korra is back and yours truly, Shiro Shinobi, couldn't be more thrilled. Shiro Shinobi. Now we know his name. There was that time I covered the Nut Tuck Mover premiere. Boy, was that fun. That was fun. Sit back, relax, and take a trip down memory lane. Okay, chapter eight, Remembrances. You know, there's something about being kidnapped that makes a guy realize he needs to get his act together. Yeah, I agree. Let's toughen you up. So there actually is some original animation, but I'm guessing that something about this is going to evolve the need for remembrances. Ah, I wasn't ready! Woo down! Mako. How dare you injure the prince? Would his royal highness like a cherry berry lemonade? No, that's not helping. And maybe some of those sticky dumplings too? <laughs> you dated the Avatar? Sit. You and I need to have a little gab session right now. How'd you guys first meet? Bolin and I were playing for the fire fairies. Remembrances. I wanted it all. Riches, fame, accolades. But all that changed when I met Korra. Wow, I, I heard you play on the radio. Come on, Bolin, we're up. Whoa, that was the first time you met? Kind of rude there, buddy. I see. This is the the cost cutting right here. But it's so interesting to look back because I remember my impression of all of them when I first started watching the show. I think the short Republic City Hustle really helped me develop a lot of appreciation for, for Mako because he's really shouldered the the task of like being the, the one who takes care of both of them. Cora proved to be an amazing pro vendor and a loyal friend. She helped me save Bolin when he was taken by the Equalists. The Equalists, remember them? Remembrances. <laughs> I remember when this happened. I thought it was too convenient that Asami had just, just happened to hit him and was the daughter of uh, someone helping him on. But nope, just your everyday Vespa accident inspired by FLCL. I was, I, I... That was the luckiest traffic accident. You really got to work on your introductions. Hey, when you got charm like mine, you don't need introductions. Oh... What I'm trying to say is, as much as you drive me crazy, I also think you're pretty amazing. Oh no, the Bolin scene. I thought you were dating Asami. Two, get out of here. Naughty Mako, you take after your grandfather. Okay. But my feelings for Korra became clear when Tarlock Oh, they didn't show the Bolin scene. That was one of the most heartfelt moments. I'm getting so nostalgic for the for the first season. I remember the the excitement of starting the show. It was amazing. It feels like a lifetime ago. I'm sorry things got so messed up between us, but whatever happens today, I want you to know how much I care about you. I care about you too. Wait, was that supposed to be you breaking up with her? Yes, that was a breakup. Didn't sound like a breakup. You know, it was really unclear. I love you, Cora. And then she broke my desk. And then you two lived happily ever after? Nope. Of course you take his side. You know, sometimes I wonder whose side you're on. There aren't any sides. That's what I'm saying. Well, I guess if we're both putting our jobs first, maybe there's no room for our relationship. And that's how you get your desk broken. Now that's a breakup. I give up. Well, I'm not giving up on you. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. We had that fight before you left. Remember? Maybe it hasn't all come back yet. Was it a bad fight? Uh... <laughs> it's still funny. Well, me and Asami were never officially back together. Really? That again? You know it seems like you're so afraid to disappoint anyone that you end up disappointing everyone. Oh, words two with the insight. Never been spoken. High five! That's an especially insightful comment for, for Mako because that's his whole thing. Like, he's the one who has to be strong. He's the one who has to be protector of Bolin. I understand that feeling and I relate to it. I think in some cases that, that feeling of wanting to be there for everyone, not let anyone down, I think it comes from a misunderstanding of the way others perceive you. The value we provide to others is largely invisible to us. For good or for bad, people don't really speak out 
every time they they're happy with you or, or they like you or, or whatever and the way we are feels so natural to us that it becomes normal and we don't see the benefit we provide to others and so the way we interpret that is well i'm only useful to people if i'm this way but actually we're missing all the other value that we provide when people realize this that they'll probably be happy to tell you it's just that there's no occasion for that to come up you know because for whatever reason we speak about the negatives more than we speak about the positives one good way to remedy this is is to be more forthcoming with praise because people really like that you know people like to to be valuable at an individual level i think it's good not to see yourself as like having this unilateral value like i'm only good if i do this or i'm a failure if i don't do this there's so much value that mako provides to people beyond like you know being the the rock for everyone it's over for real this time yeah and you guys are better off for it i had to figure out who i was without a lady in my life i know what that's like I need to need distance from women because I have so many all over me all the time. I'm not seeing it. Laura showed me the importance of putting others before myself. And whenever I think of her, she continues to inspire me. That story is amazing and I really learned something. I realized that ladies are complicated. No offense, Grandma. None taken. I better just focus on being a better king. There you go. So some good did come out of it. It's interesting that he said he learned how to put people first before himself, because probably in a way that's what he thought he was doing before. Actually, a lot of it was was self-preservation, like him trying to find his own identity in the world. I can take it. Ah, Woo down. down. <laughs> All right, so that was the love triangle. It's interesting they chose to go into the the romance so heavily, because I think for a lot of people that's one of the weaker elements of the show. I've just been thinking about something Toph said. She told me that the world doesn't need me, and it's basically pointless to try to stop Kovira. That's ridiculous. But no matter what I do, the world seems to always be out of balance. Mm, interesting. I thought I was really gonna change things. I was so naive. The first time I saw Amon take someone's bending away, I was terrified. And my worst nightmare came true. Cora! Uh, yeah, that was really crazy. I think what Cora is describing here is a, is a good analogy for life as well. I think it's just part of maturing. I remember when I was young, I was thinking like, I have all the answers. Once I get out into the world, things are going to be different. But you gain a totally new perspective when you actually step into real life. Because you realize exactly where you are in the world. And the world is huge and crazy and competitive and so complicated like and i think that's a necessary step towards humility and like from humility you can actually start to gain an understanding because you sort of strip away your you know your preconceptions of the way things are but the first feeling is terror just like cora said and i think it's part of why the, the hero's journey is so compelling because we're all aware of these major obstacles looming in life you know like even having a good relationship or taking on a big project like whatever it is we know instinctively how much it'll shake up our lives and so it's so great to see somebody take that on because it's inspiring and you're like oh maybe i could take that on too maybe i could face amon or whatever or whatever the amon is in life and everyone has a different struggle and i think it's sort of a rare quality for people to actually address that head on and so it's fun just watching other people go through that you know and just trying to emulate what could i take on you know how could i not necessarily be less fearful but go through the fear anyway because the fear is an essential part of it the pain is an essential part of it Corey, you're forgetting about all the good that happened after you exposed amon as the fraud he was people had hope again and it was all because of you and I was hopeful too, but that feeling didn't last long. As soon as I defeated Amon, a new enemy took his place. This is interesting. I'm seeing this in a whole new way. I know, like, I deviate from the shows a lot. You know, it's just how I think about things. One thing I think about a lot is meaning, like personal meaning in life. And one of my beliefs that I operate under is that one important part of living a, a good life is having a dream or having a goal or something that makes you really happy to think about and to aim at. And that focus will give vitality to, to your life. But there's a challenge to that too, which is that the value is not necessarily in the accomplishment of the goal, it's in the striving towards the goal. The process of going forward and meeting the world every day and learning who you are in that and becoming stronger and shedding weaknesses you know that actually is the value but a problem for him is when you actually achieve goals because that opens up a whole new set of problems which is what's the next goal because you need to keep moving forward and this is something i've been struggling with conceptually it's like well what's the end of that journey you know is there ever an end no matter what you achieve as human beings the good just starts to feel like your baseline and you have to like aim at something higher and it's almost like, what does that all mean? What does it build towards? So what Cora is going through, I feel, directly applies because she can face a villain and she can be powerful and she can overcome it using her abilities. But a new thing will always emerge. Her job as the Avatar is never complete. How do you make peace with that? I don't know. It's something I'm thinking about a lot these days. I was helpless to stop him from destroying Rava and cutting off my connection to my past lives. Yoshi! 
Unalak and Vatu became more powerful than ever. And on the plus side, he freed Varric, so win for the universe. But you became more powerful too. I mean, you turned oh, yeah. into a giant spirit. <laughs> yes, you did. Giant blue Cora. Things are more out of balance than ever now. Nothing's changed. It's true. There will always be new conflicts and enemies to face. But the important thing is to learn from your enemies and better yourself over time, which you have. You've changed so much since you first arrived on Air Temple Island. You've matured into a thoughtful young woman who puts the needs of others before herself. The new Air Nation is a testament to that. You sacrificed everything to save them. You're an inspiration to the world. Thank you both. No matter what happens, no matter how crazy things get, I'll always try to restore balance. I don't know why this is making me emotional. <sighs> it's funny, I think Tenzin answered my question a little bit. I think the answer maybe becomes more clear when you look back and you see the, the journey you've traveled. And I think there's some beauty in like... <clears throat> I think there's beauty in trying to live your best life. And I think that by doing so, you just, by some law of magic, you make things better for people around you. By going forward and, and you know, trying to be the best person you can be and live your life as fully as possible. The clip show of all episodes. <laughs> and I think going back to the, the part with Mako, when you live your best life and when you are the best person you can be and when you, you know, try to contribute what you have with honesty and humility... I think that the benefits that you provide to others are more than you can see. And I think one way of looking at the value of that long term is that you forever marked a time where you lived and you did as best as you could. And that will be a t an eternal fact. There's a great book that I recommend if you guys are interested called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And one of his ideas is that, you know, if, if you think of yourself as having one life, you want to mark out the best life that you can have. Because you come and go, you know, so, you know, how do you want to think of yourself and how do you match that thought? <laughs> how do you match those expectations? And I think there's pitfalls to that too. Like, you know, like Mako, you can take it too one dimensionally and think that you have to be this perfect person. I don't think that's the, the message. I just think that to go forward and try to meet challenges and also by extension, meet yourself day after day while also having patience and having some just natural sympathy, empathy for yourself as you go forward and make mistakes, etc. And so I think the, the result of going through things that way is probably not going to be terrible. <laughs> yeah, okay. Wow. I did not expect to get feels from the the clip show episode, but, you know, that's life. You never know. In six years, four months, and 14 days. Ugh, I can still taste it. Please, Barry, give me something lighthearted. Does feel like throwing themselves overboard? <laughs> yes, me. I present to you now, Bolin, as Nuktuk, Hero of the South. Trademark, Veramovers International. In the incredible true story of Bolin, hero of the world. This is very meta. Am I playing Nuktuk or is Nuktuk playing me? That's a great question. I try to teach a swami the power of levitation, but he's too stupid to understand it, so I kick him out. Oh yeah, I forgot how it started with Varric. He bursts into a rapturous melody. Where can I find my teacher? Oh, come on! You should start from when I met Korra. Korra. Boring. When does the singing start? There wasn't any singing! <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of musicals, so... The worst of the worst team up! Zahir! Vatu! Wait, Zahir didn't team up with Vatu? How would that even happen? Hello. Hey, it's Zahir. Oh, hey Zahir. Glad I caught you at home. <laughs> Let me conference in. I'm on! This movie's awesome. Can we please not include... Not include who, Amon? Ooh. Incredibly boring and unpopular sorcerer from the north. There you go. There's the self-awareness from the clip shows. This is the equivalent of let's keep flying over the Great Divide. After leaving the beautiful but emotionally unstable water <laughs> tribe princess at the... Accurate. Okay, guys. I think we finally ditched him. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> this is great. Hello? Anyone there? Aw, oh, poor Unalak. He gets a lot of hate. Opal realizes how much she loves Bolin and forgives him for whatever stuff he was talking about earlier, which will probably not be in the final cut of the mover anyway. She does? 
Hope so. And when Juji shoots his laser eyes at the evil Unalak, they bounce off Batu, setting him free, and hit Bolin, turning him into a giant! Yes! Wait, did he have boobs? He did have boobs, didn't he? <laughs> I love how they just put Bol Bolin's face on giant blue Korra. That's amazing. I feel very confused looking at this. <laughs> giant Bolin and the evil Unabatu fight toe-to-toe, -to -toe, zapping each other with their laser beams as they stomp around Republic City. But thankfully, Bolin's spiritual mojo is so strong that he attracts the Queen of the Fairies. Good name for Jinora. And that's where the stars come from. Wow. Incredible. It didn't make any sense! Doesn't matter. It's just a mover. Don't overthink it. It's like a ride. Never let good the advice. truth get in the way of a good story, kid. Well, this episode is obviously the most important in the series because it gave us giant sexy Bolin. I needed that. So I'm reading Brian's post about what happened this episode. So it turns out there were budget cuts and Nickelodeon was asking them to fire their crew, but they couldn't have finished the season without them, so they decided to do a clip show instead. One interesting part is he talks about Samurai Champloo, and he says they had a clip episode where, quote, they mixed about five minutes of new footage in with the old, and set up a context where the characters would be reflecting on past events while narrating over them, offering new insights or at least providing some humor. I pitched this angle to Mike, and he agreed this was the best way to turn this big old lemon into some lemonade, and I think this episode did a good job of that. I think that having some of the characters narrate over their past actions gave it some nice context and for me obviously gave quite a bit of feeling a surprising amount of that it's been mentioned to me that this would have otherwise been a flashback episode for kuvira obviously that would have been great but i appreciate this episode and i appreciate the fact that they did their best to turn lemon into lemonade as they said well anyway that's the end of this episode i'll see you guys tomorrow for episode 9. <laughs>